Hello, hello everybody. In today's episode, we are converting a mechanical RPM gauge into an electric one with this super cool kit that we got. Um, I'll take you through it. This is actually the cheapest way to convert one of these as far as money goes. Nothing to it. I'll walk you through it in this video step by step, guys. Uh, let me take you to the garage right now and show you why you would want to convert one of these to electric in the first place. In our case, we don't have a choice. Okay guys, so we're in the garage and I mean, I got this thing out. I do have a video, which there will be a link to, of how to get this out without lowering the steering column if you're not interested in lowering your steering column. So there will be a link. Okay, so I mean, if you're having a hard time getting this out, so you push this and then this cable comes out. See, and this cable just spins from your distributor. So all the way up to 1974, they used the mechanical RPM gauges, not electric ones. And the reason for that is this ignition system uh, used to be a mechanical system with like point system, not an HEI, which it is now. A very popular upgrade on these cars is to upgrade the ignition system to one of this, to an HEI ignition system. And the problem with these is there's nowhere to hook this cable into um, on that one. That one's just out of like a different newer vehicle or whatever. I mean, you can buy one of these. I mean, I'll put a link in the description that actually has like a hookup to this. So you could just run your original RPM gauge, but this is all super old and I'm um, sure it never really worked to begin with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy here and we're gonna convert it to electric step by step. I'll show you how to do it. There's an awesome kit you could buy. There'll be a link to the kit, which converts this to electric. All right, let's go in the house and get started. Okay guys, we're back inside. So first of all, when you were pulling this out of your car, just in case you're having a hard time, it's right here. There's one, two bolts on the back of it. Not these ones. Those ones there, that got it off from the uh, panel there that holds all the gauges in place. And on the bottom here, there was one screw there. And uh, yeah, this thing just came out. So that, it wasn't too bad to get it out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is on the back of this, one, two, three screws. Uh, we're gonna unscrew those, they're a quarter inch. All right, we got those bolts out and that just comes right off just like that. I mean, we can wash all this before we put it back together. So there's that. All right, next on the back of it, we're gonna unscrew that screw and that screw. Let's do that right now. All right, so then that just comes out like that. And there it is. And now for the hardest part of this whole thing, we gotta get this needle off. Let's go in the garage. Okay guys, so I mean, this whole back section is coming off, the whole entire thing. So we have to get this needle off. Now, uh, I'll show you, I'll try to zoom in on it right now. All right, see that like thicker part right there? So that part is also part of the needle. So if you look on the other side here, see it's actually like a really, really skinny part. It is hard to see, but see it's skinnier. So we have to slide this part out of that part. And that's honestly the hardest part without damaging anything. So what we gotta do is grab some good old WD-40, flip this thing upside down, see just like that and get some of this WD-40 and spray that so it gets oil in there. So we can get it out. So we'll let that soak for about five minutes. Okay guys, so we got it in the house. Now we unscrew these two screws. Don't try pulling it by this because it's not gonna work. Okay guys, so now with these screws out, see we can lift this up like that. Hold this all steady. Like I said, this is the hardest part, not to break that needle, but we can do it. And then we can take a screwdriver. See, and we should be able to pry that off. Boom, just like that and it's intact no damage done all right let's continue okay now since we got this opened i mean give this a light wipe don't go crazy with this because you could wipe the numbers off so just get the dust off and good enough don't don't try to like be a hero and clean this like crazy okay so that's oh see you go see you go see what happens 
So you don't want to do that. You don't even really want to touch this thing, actually. Okay, I'm going to clean that up with a Q-tip. So yeah, I'll just clean this up with a Q-tip a little bit, just water. And I mean, I am so happy I didn't like spray Windex on this or something, because guess what? I would need a new back plate. So I just saved you guys $200, guys. So you lightly wipe it or maybe don't even touch it at all. See, that's perfect, basically. And this is ready to be reinstalled, just like that. Okay, guys, before we move on, I'm going to show you what this kit looks like. So it comes in a little box like this, nothing to it. Inside of there, all you get is one little piece of paper with some minor instructions. So it shows you here how to set it for a V8 or an LS motor. Um, okay, you could read this if you wanted to, screenshot it. All right, and then here's what this thing looks like. So it's just an electronic set up see i'll compare it to the old one so basically it's it's basically the same thing there's, there's like holes in the back for the screws see so the original screw screws were there and there and then these ones are here and here this is just like a little foam pad um so that's all the same right like if you're gonna do that and it's the same height like this thing is bang on this is exactly what you need. All right, let's put this on, guys. And you can't even put it on upside down because of the way the screws are. Or can you? Yeah, you might be able to. Okay, so let's do some thinking. Okay, guys, so I mean, the two holes is the top. The one hole is the bottom. So I'm just looking at this, and there is some small writing on it. So I'm, I'm guessing the writing has to be the proper way. So like that would be up, right? If you look at the writing, but I don't know for a hundred percent. So we actually have to go test this and make sure. So we're gonna go in the garage right now and hook this up temporarily and test it. You know what guys, I actually flipped it around and tried putting it the other way and it hits this corner. See how like that corner is kind of rounded. So I think that actually it doesn't go the other way. So I, I don't think you can put it on wrong. So I'm gonna turn it back around and screw this together. Okay guys, so first things first, uh, there's these two rubber things in here, like that were originally there. So you pull these out, and this kit actually comes with new ones. See, they look like that, and those go there. So we're gonna put these on, see, just like that, and there we go. So that goes on like that. Okay, let's put this thing on now. All right, we got this thing in, uh, riding up, and then on the back, See, we're just gonna put the two screws in and it actually comes with nice new screws for it. So let's put those in. So yeah, you definitely need these rubber things. Otherwise these screws would go in too deep. So it's all figured out for us guys. Oh yeah, that works good. Okay, looks good to me. Okay, we're gonna tighten those. Tight like a tiger, but not too tight obviously. Oh, they actually go all the way into the end. So there you go. All right, let's tighten those up. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, guys, so we got these in. So the one thing that I don't like about this is, see, these are just kind of soldered in there. So if these move around, they could eventually break off. So before that even has a chance of happening, we're just going to take this bunch of wires here and we're going to zip tie them to this valve here, just like that. And then that way this has no chance of moving or anything. So we're gonna do that right now. There, just like that, nothing to it. Now it's safe, it's not gonna bust on us. See what I mean? Just like that, we'll get some pliers and just tighten these a little bit better. See what we did? Okay, let's continue. All right, simple enough, right? So now we're gonna take this thing with the lights for the brake and I think it's the blinker underneath, so that just goes in like that. No big deal, right? And then we take our front plate here, and that, just see there's like two spots for screws there, so we're gonna put that in. Just like that, and we're gonna put those two little screws in, and guess what? It comes with brand new ones, so we're just gonna use the brand new ones that they gave us. All right, so that's on there nice. All right, guys, so now at the back of this, see there's two little switches. So according to these switches for a V8, um, 
we got to set it like that and then for a four cylinder like that but the ls motors apparently get set the same way as the four cylinder but anyways this is our 350 so we're gonna set those like that i'll do that right now see so these just slide all right so this should be ready all right guys we're ready to put the needle on now there is a trick to it so don't just put it on right away all right so what you're gonna need is a car battery or a 12 volt tractor battery whatever um, you take your red and your black wire and you hook it up black to negative red to positive and then this little dial will set to zero get it like if you just put this gauge on now it could end up being anywhere like you could put it on zero and then the second you hook up power to it it'll be over here so that's why you got to do that so i'm going to hook up the battery right now all right we got the black one hooked up We got the red one hooked up. So this thing's getting power now. So now we should be able to take this needle and this you gotta be super gentle with guys. Don't push hard on this or you will break that thing inside. You have to be very, very, very gentle. You put it right at zero. Don't even push it in all the way yet. Let's see if this even works. See, there you go. The battery's hooked up. It's bringing it back to zero. Let's disconnect the battery. Okay, ready? So we disconnected the battery. We'll just put this anywhere. All right, let's see if it goes back to zero. Ready? There you go. Perfect. So what you want to do is you just want to evenly give this a push. Just like that. It just slid in just a bit. And they really specify not to push too hard because you'll break it. See, so I got it in, and see, it's not as much in as the original one was. So that's good, just so you know, in case you're putting yours on. Don't try to push it in all the way. Uh, that should be good. So that's it. Don't be very, very gentle when, when pushing this on. All right, so we're going to give it one more test. We got the positive disconnected from the battery. Let's put this wherever. Okay, ready? I'm hooking up the positive to the battery. Boom, it drops to zero. So that's perfect. Okay, so that all looks super good. Let's put this thing on now. All right, and then this just goes back on the way it came off. No big deal. And it's got three little screws at the back, so let's put those on right now. Okay, guys, I mean, we got this whole thing ready to go back in the car, so we're going to go in the garage now, and I'm going to show you how to wire it into the car step by step. So the only thing I ask from you guys in return for me doing this video is just give me a thumbs up. That's it. It only takes a second. Give me a thumbs up. YouTube bases its videos on that, so that will help me out. And the second thing is, I got a whole entire series, I'm up to like 12 episodes now, on restoring a Corvette C3, start to finish. This thing, nothing worked in it. You know, hit on my playlist, treat it like a real show, and just watch all the episodes in a row. If you watch all these episodes, you will be able to rebuild one of these cars yourself. I like car shows, but I hate all the fake drama they have in them. This car show, actually shows you how to do everything so please thumbs up and watch my playlist of restoring an old corvette c3 all right let's go in the garage guys so there it is guys and i mean we've done tons of work on this thing every episode did a specific thing we got vacuum episodes opening pop-up headlight episodes episode about this wiper door the motor running episode we got interior episodes with all the wiring and all the heater box stuff we've removed and installed and repaired engine and light harnesses it's all in this series it's good good series so make sure you guys watch it all right i'm going to show you how to hook up this rpm gauge right now no more uh promoting myself all right guys well there really isn't much to hook in one of these up honestly there is only three wires so it's super super easy all right let me walk you through this so the first wire is your negative, your ground wire. So you need to find a good solid ground inside of the car. Let me take you inside. Okay, so right underneath the steering wheel right here is a perfect place for a ground right here. See, there's already a ground here for some other stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up that black wire to there. We're gonna take these off. We're gonna clean this to bare metal, clean all these grounds, whatever they're from. Basically, make sure that these grounds are good. Put the new ground. 
All right, let's do that. Okay, so this thing roughly goes right here. So we got the black wire and you know, we're just gonna shorten it a little bit. It's a little bit too long. So we'll shorten it a tiny bit and put a connector on it. All right guys, so see, we got a connector on here for the ground. Uh, we shorten it a little bit. Okay, now moving on to the positive wire, which is this one. So this needs a positive, but here's the catch. The positive that it gets can't be constant. It's only allowed to get positive when your, when your car is running, basically, like when your ignition's on. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is this thing will drain your battery if you just hook it up to like a constant positive. So we're gonna go inside the car and look for a positive that only has power when the car is running or when the ignition is on. So I'm gonna go find one and I'll show you where it is. Okay guys, I would hate to confuse you guys here, so I'm gonna try to explain what's been going on. So I've been looking for a positive for like an hour. Like this took longer than the whole entire rebuilding of the actual RPM gauge. So here's the problem that I'm having. Okay guys, so the first reaction I had is, you know, you turn your key and your radio turns on, right? Well, you would think that would be a good positive, right? So the way a radio works is there's three wires powering it. There is a negative, there's a constant positive, which is always there even if the car is off. And then there's a positive that only turns on when you turn the key, right? So the reason you have that is, so like your clock settings and that, it remembers. So it's always getting power, right? So here's the thing. I took the plug off the back, right? And I used my voltmeter here. And this is kind of important. I just want to tell you why in this car you can't hook into the radio. Okay, guys, this isn't complicated, so don't get lost. So you set this voltmeter to 20 volts, right? On this side, you have DC, direct current. Uh, that's the symbol for it. So you got like, basically think of it as two wires. You got a positive wire, and then you have a negative wire, let's just say, right? And then here you have alternating current. See, there is no positive and negative. You can hook it up either way. So this is like house electricity basically, and this is car electricity. So you set it to that. Okay, think of it this way. If you got a fan in your house and you plug it in, right? It's gonna spin in one direction. If you unplug it and turn the plug around and plug it back in, it's not gonna spin backwards because it's alternating current. It will, the current will just switch basically. Think of it that way. But direct current, like what you have in a car, like a 12 volt system, it doesn't work like that. If you hook up your fan backwards, it's actually gonna run backwards. So that's the difference between alternating current and direct current, DC, AC, DC, like the band. Okay, so you got that figured out now. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so here's the problem that I'm having. So this is the power for the radio that's switchable. So when you turn your ignition on, now it has 12 volts. And when you turn it off, now it has no volts. See, but the problem I'm having is there's a little bit of drain in that wire. Okay, so we disconnect this, right? So this is this is the power going to the radio. So you hook up your positive to it right in there. Okay, and then you take your negative and you touch it to the body of the car. And look what happens. See, it's got like 0 0.03 volts. So... The problem with that is if we hook up that RPM gauge to it and the car's not running, it's very, very, very slowly gonna drain our battery because there is electricity in this and there, and there shouldn't be. So we need to find a wire that has no drain whatsoever. When the key is off, that voltmeter has to read zero for, the, for this particular application. It needs to read zero, but when you turn your key on, it needs to read 12 volts or 12 whatever, right? 12.85, whatever, that doesn't matter. But it has to read zero. Otherwise, it will drain your battery. See, I don't understand why the radio has uh, a little bit of voltage, but this car does have a problem where if you leave the battery hooked up overnight, it actually, the battery's dead in the morning. So that could potentially be it. I will have an episode, guys, where... I show you how to figure that out. It's actually super, super easy to figure out uh, where the drain's coming from. So I will have an episode. It will be entitled, How to Find a Battery Draw, something like that. But either way, I found the perfect uh, power source and I'll show you where it is and it's perfect. It's exactly what we need and there's no drain on it. 
Okay, so on this gear shifter here, there's this thing here. I'll tell you what all these wires are for really quick. So these two wires, basically, when, when they touch together, so when the car is in park, now if you turn your key, that allows the starter to crank over. But if you, if you had your car in like drive, let's say, or reverse or something, see now that circuit's uh, broken and now your car won't start. So it has to be in park, right? And then these other two wires, these two wires are for your reverse lights. So this wire here always has power in it, um, always when the ignition is on. So right now there's no power in it at all. It's at zero. But then when you turn your key like this, now this, this has power in it, right? And then if you put your car in reverse, see now that circuit inside of this thing, so it travels from there, it goes into this wire, and it runs all the way to your reverse lights, giving them power, right? So if you had your car in reverse like this, right now your reverse lights would be on, but then the second you take your key and you turn it off, the reverse lights turn off. So this green wire is actually the perfect wire for us because um, when the key is off, there's zero voltage in it. And when the key is on, it gets 12 volts. In some cars, a cigarette lighter is a good source because when you have your ignition off, the cigarette lighter doesn't work. But in this particular car, the cigarette lighter always works. The radio usually is a good source too, but unfortunately in our case, there is some drain in it. It might be all right, it might be fine like that. Don't get me wrong. Um, I will look into that, but we're just gonna hook into a wire that has zero, zero drain. All right, let me just hook up the voltmeter and show you, and then let's hook that up. Okay, guys, so with the key off, we're touching the positive to the green wire, and then we are touching this to the ground, which is the whole shifter is a ground. Ready? There you go, we got nothing. So there's no drain. It's at zero. That's what you want, zero. Okay, now we're gonna turn the key on. All right, now with the key on, ready? Boom, we got 12 volts. Okay, so this is the wire we're gonna use, this green one. So that's what that looks like up close, see? Um, so we're just going to trace this wire back. See, there's like a plug here. And then it runs. I mean, we could cut it right here and just uh, hook into the green one and that'll work. There, we can just hook right into that. All right, guys, I'm just twisting these uh, wires together and I just realized a huge mistake that I made. Uh, let me show you. So I put this into the green one like I said I was going to do, but look. I just realized, see, coming from here on this plug, the color switch, see? So, so purple goes in, green comes out, and then on this plug, green goes in, purple comes out. So I actually hooked these up the wrong way. So if I was gonna hook it up here, I would have hooked it up to the green one, but since it switches colors, it tricked me. So I gotta basically cut this purple one now, and I'm gonna stick it to that and that will fix that. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay guys, so I mean, as you can see, that looks pretty good, nothing wrong with that. So that runs to the RPM gauge over there. So all we got left now is one more green wire. I'll show you where that goes. Um, so we're gonna run it through the firewall. And guys, I mean, there's no written rule where the switchable positive has to come from. Possibly one of these would have worked as well. Um, you know, I just did it over there, but there's no written rule where you get it from, so you decide on your own where you wanna get your switchable positive from. Okay, let's move on. Okay guys, so right there on the firewall, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So right in there, there's that part where we can run that green wire through and that gets hooked up to this HEI distributor, which is not original. So see, right here is a power wire that goes into it. I'm gonna unhook it. See, there's one there. And that's 12 volts that it gets constant. Um, anyways, and then on the other side of it, another plug goes in like this. So we're gonna put this at the end of that wire and that goes in on the other side and that is for the tack meter. So we're gonna do that. See now, this would be also a good source for a 12 volt 
for the RPM gauge, we could have used this realistically as well. So that wire basically works the same way. When you turn your key on, it gets 12 volts. And when you turn it off, it doesn't. I actually checked it and it's also flat at zero. So we could have hooked into it. The only thing, there is some confusion with that wire because um, 1974 and prior, I believe, I could be wrong by a year or something, but they didn't have the HEI ignitions. They had the old point system and the old point system, this wire originally had nine volts going to it, not 12. In order to keep the points happy, it likes to be at nine volts, not 12 volts. But when somebody upgraded this, cause these HEI ignitions actually run on 12 volts. So they, we rewired this somewhere under the car. I'm not too sure where, but this does have 12 volts going to it. So somebody, wired it in somewhere and it already works, but it, I just didn't want to make it too confusing by hooking into this one in case you just converted this and you only got nine volts, this, that, and some other stuff. So anyways, that's got 12 volts now going into this and the other side will be where the green wire goes. So we're going to run that and basically once that's all hooked up, we're basically going to start it and try it and let's see if it works. Okay guys, we got the green wire through. We're just going to cut it right here. And we're gonna put this thing on it. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, the green wire is ready. Let's plug her in. Okay. Okay guys, all we got left now is to clean up this ground. Okay, some dielectric grease all over this. And let's put her on. Okay, that's the ground. And let's try this thing out, guys. And guys, good news, we have a visitor to witness the working of the RPM gauge. Just came to visit us. <laughs> All right, let's start this thing up and see if it works. All right, guys, let's start her up and see if she works. All right. Yeah. Let's give it some reps. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching Problem Solver Garage. Make sure you watch the whole entire playlist, guys, with all the episodes in a row, just like a real show. Thanks for watching. It's a super good show.